Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, as you've seen from the little intro, today's more BMW work. I promise I am going to get work done on the Supra eventually. Car drive past. There we go. It is currently there. It's full of snow. It did snow last night, so me procrastinating yesterday not wanting to do all this suspension work on the BMW has now turned into me doing it midday on a Sunday with some snow still about but not as much as this morning thank goodness it is currently one degree outside with the real feel of minus one so yeah about one degree worse than yesterday Yes, there was zero. Real feel of zero. Minus one. But it had wind, and the wind was unbearable. So, <laughs> long story short, I am now suffering for my choices of being a car guy and wanting to do things myself as usual. I probably should have taken up another hobby like crochet or something that involved me sitting indoors where it's nice and warm, but no. I'm here, it is too late, and we are going to move on. So, new axle stands, shocks, etc., bolts, all the little grommets, uh, anti roll bar bushes, that was it, drop links, etc. Now, that's all the stuff I've got to do today because one of the shocks on the back of my BMW has blown, so it's leaking quite badly. Um, I need to replace the eccentric bolts because I wanted to get it aligned because the car is feeling rather twitchy on the road and they can't align it because they say the bolts are too rusted. So I need to hope and pray I can loosen those bolts and that they don't snap. Um, yeah. They should be fine. They're all the big bolts. I don't think they're going to snap. Um, I'm going to give them a good dose of WD-40 anyway, um, first, then I think go ahead and make sure I've got the shocks changed out and then I'll move on to those bolts. If they don't want to free up, then at least, you know, I'm sort of done for the day and I can worry about it on next weekend when I've got more time and I can deal with the snap bolt. But if it's going to fight me this afternoon, I'm not going to bother with it because I'll still need the car this week. But at least I can change the shocks out and make sure those are changed out, the anti-roll bar bushes are changed out, the drop links are changed out, and then I know my suspension is at least good. Right, enough of me chatting, chewing your ear off. You've probably skipped through this part of the video anyway. If you haven't, thank you for dealing with this amount of ridiculous talking, but... <sighs> to the time lapse. Let's go. Okay, so these two bolts over here, which you can see here and here obviously, are the two eccentric camber bolts that are the problem. Now I've sprayed them down with some WD-40 and just brushed them down with a wire brush to clear any debris off the end of the threads just to make it a little easier. I'm going to hit them with some more WD-40 now just to make sure it penetrates in there. Um, hopefully that should make them a lot easier to get out and then can literally just pop the new bolts in here's hoping that goes according to plan this is one of our problematic shocks as you can see the uh, bump stop is completely deteriorated here into nothing at all and this dust boot is just rattled around allowing dirt and grit to get in there this one doesn't seem to be leaking the other one on the other hand is terrible so yeah We'll obviously deal with that. Next problem is, which I didn't expect, would be the anti-roll bar bushes themselves. They actually sit up here on the subframe, right here, close to the chassis. 
So this is going to make things a little interesting. Usually they sit underneath, but for some reason on the E90 platform, they seem to have moved them up top here. I know my 46 had them down at the bottom. Very easy to get to. Not the same here. So I should be able to get in there, loosen the two bolts off and lift the sucker up enough and then slide it over this way to get this bush out and push the new one in without too much problem, but that's hopeful. The other side, as I was telling you, look at the shock, it is just horribly damp. The entire thing is just leaking oil everywhere. It is shot. Now, that anti-roll bar bush is a lot harder to get to. See, right back there. Because of this fuel pipe to the tank. So, hopefully, again, I can get a spanner in there, but I might need to actually undo these bolts here and move this pipe out the way. So, I am gonna try to get on with that. I'm gonna go inside the car, undo the top where these shocks lie, undo the bottom underneath here, and hopefully get these shocks changed out and the bushes and all that stuff ASAP because, yeah, it's already, gosh, what is it? Yeah. It's already 1.30. Half an hour and I have only managed to spray some WD-40 and some bolts and clean them. All right, that was a bit of a pain in the ass. So I've eventually got this side off and exposed the top bolt there. Now I need to do the same on the other side. So really what happens is you take the bottom parcel shelf and all that stuff out. Take off the side cover, which I've left there. Now, what you have is a T20 there. You need to lift up this cover here. Something like a pry bar will do very well. Help you just lift it all up, it clicks out of place. Then next you've got to remove the front pad over there, like this one. It also just pulls forward, then allowing you to essentially loosen this and move it off. But it will probably have one of these push style fasteners in there and another T20 up top there. I'm going to time lapse this one just so if you want to know how to do it you can but beyond that I'm not going to explain it any much more because well to be honest the rest of it will give it away so let's go ahead and time lapse this. and it is two weeks later so last time I was working on the BMW a few seconds ago for you guys I had a problem where the bolts these little guys that connect to the bottom rubber there have essentially stripped one stripped the others have come out fine but one of the bolts that attaches the shock absorber to that rubber itself has actually not decided to play ball and is kind of stuck. So I was having a right 
serious problem trying to get that out. Now, with all of that, um, I realized my jack was also not up to the task. It only lifts from 12 and a half centimeters to 32 centimeters. So I decided to get a new one. A much better new one. As you see, this one lifts from 7.5 to 50.5 centimeters. Nice low profile, flat design. So instead of having the little claw like that one does, it's a nice flat base. There we go, car's gone past. And that will make lifting on the car a lot easier without it trying to essentially punch holes into everything. Next, obviously, I got new bolts, picked up an impact driver because I have a feeling the camber adjuster bolts are going to give me a lot of hell, or so are a lot of others. So I am tired of battling with poor accessibility and having to use the breaker bar in very awkward positions. So this is going to make getting things off and on a lot easier. Very powerful, 950 Newton meters of torque. So. They're coming off whether I like it or not. Next. All new flexi brake lines. So new rubber ones, new glow plugs, and new drop links for the front as well. Because obviously while we're changing out the rear drop links, which are somewhere, there we go, in there. I'm going to do the front ones as well because I think last year I wanted to change the front ones. I changed them and the ones I'd got were absolute rubbish. They literally knocked from the moment I put them on. So I had to actually put the old ones back on for the car to pass its MOT. It still passed with the old ones, but they, they still, there was a bit of a clunking noise coming from them. So they've, they've obviously degraded over the year. So new ones and some gloves. And I don't know whether I mentioned, but axle stands as well and that's pretty much an update of everything else I've decided to get um, so yeah I think it's time to crack on and get started with tearing the BMW apart again all right progress report I have had terrible luck with the brakes so the lines are rotten there so they broke off same on the other side that bolt is seized and needs to be cut off. I've had to replace the breather pipe, which goes from up there, through this hole, and all the way into the tank, to that little green nozzle there. But in order to do that, I've had to drop the exhaust, the drive shaft, Take out all the heat shielding. Remove the bolts that hold the handbrake assembly on. So then I can eventually drop the tank low enough to get the old pipe off, as you can see. I couldn't fill the car up because every time I did, it would leak because it is rubbed through and as you can see nice solid wet patch and I've got the new one which I need to now snake all the way through and then start putting this all back together and then I've only just only fixed the fueling and then I've got to get back to the brakes and that bolt this is day three. <sighs> dread. So much dread on my face. Oh well, I'll keep you updated with my pain along the way. <laughs> All right, so it's day five. I have managed to successfully get that fuel tank pipe back in, get the fuel tank back in place bolted back in, get the handbrake cables bolted back in, put half the heat shielding back in because the other half is just corroded so badly on all the connection points. Maybe you can see that there. 
that it literally, put that down there, cannot be bolted back in place. So I need to either get a new one or call it quits on a heat shield under there. I'll probably get a new one just to protect the fuel tank from the heat from the exhaust. I mean, it's a diesel, but still, it's a plastic tank, so I don't want to take any risks. Also, um, the brake lines. I have managed to replace the flexi lines on the back with a huge amount of pain and swearing and questioning my life choices. Um, <laughs> mainly because the existing lines were so bad, they just kept breaking the whole time. Eventually I had to cut quite a few, quite a bit of a distance away from the soft line to actually get to good pipe again. The rest of it had actually just corroded so badly that I had to put junctions in place and then flare new <sighs> fittings and everything else. I'll, I'll go show you this, let's have a quick look. So, as you can see here, that's what I'm busy talking about. I had to put a joint in over there and then to essentially the new flex line into the caliper. I've already bled it, doesn't leak anymore because I had a leak initially and then the same on this side. I had to add the junction there, new line to the flex line because the old ones literally just snapped and broke the pipe literally right here where they joined. So I am hoping I don't have to do the front just yet. So basically I've just got to go ahead and see how the MOT goes tomorrow with the front brake lines. They've obviously got some sort of cracking in them similar to this. I'm not sure how bad. I'll have a look just now. Um, but I'm dreading I'm going to have the same problem like I just did with the rear lines where they are literally just rusted to the flex lines and I'm going to have to cut and flare on junctions. Um, depending how close it is to the ABS pump I might just run an entire new line from the ABS pump to the caliper or to the flex line that goes to the caliper, you know what I mean. Um, but I've got the new flex lines here, in there with the other parts as you can see. this. I'll slip you around is a couple of the couple of the V2 old shock absorbers from the rear. This is the particularly blown one on the driver's side. It's in a shocking state. And then on the passenger side, the bump stop is non existent and everything else is just completely shot. And if you compare those to our nice new shiny ones, I know, right? Amazing. Also, I've got the old bolts here. This one, obviously I managed to get out, the other one is still stuck in the car and requires a bush replacement. Well, I've got an order, but for MOT it still works. So it will be left in place, and then after I've got the MOT done tomorrow, I will cut it out, push the bush out, get a new bush from BMW, push that one in, and then pop the new bolts in with the new nuts. And of course these bolts here are our replacements for these, as you can see, the new nuts obviously that fit them. I'm not going to go ahead and get new washers, mainly because they're fine, they're just a little dirty. I mean, as you can see, that's the washer from the bolt that is still stuck in the car, so nothing wrong with it. But yeah, um, other than that, everything is ready to go back in. I just need to do some final assembly on the shocks, I've just got the little hats and rubbers that need to be fitted in place. I have decided not to do the anti-roll bar bushes, as I maybe already mentioned in the video. I don't know. I did this a few days ago as well. I'm not doing them because I said you have to drop the whole rear subframe. And I do not feel like dropping the rear subframe at all because it's just a horrible endeavor. Next, 
We've obviously got our new bolts for the rubber bushes here that attach to the axle carrier itself. And last but not least, our new rear drop links to replace those crossy guys. So yeah, all in all, it's final button up day. Well, you guys join me back on the BMW again. <sighs> About a month later and a half a day, but I have drilled out that stuck eccentric camber bolt. And here it is. Ugh, it's a little bit hot, but there it is. Drilled it straight down through the center. All done. It obviously got hot enough with all the drilling. And then when it contracted, it, ma oh. contracted, it managed to obviously contract enough to slip out of the bushing. Well, now I can go ahead and put the new bolt in. And put it all back together. And I can get the car aligned, finally. I also went and picked up a new tire today, because the other one was scrubbed quite badly from, obviously, the wear from the camera of this thing just being completely off. But, otherwise, the rest of the car's been great since I've got everything done and put it through MOT. Drop links, shocks, etc. New brake lines. It's been phenomenal. And as you can see, new bolt there. And there and there. This was just the last troublemaker of the lot. Well, I'm going to throw some grease in there. Stop this problem from happening again. Throw the new bolt in. Call it a day. And edit this video. Because it's like a month late. <laughs> right. New hardware. Grease brush. Some grease. To pop this in. Da, da, da. All right. Pop you guys up over there. Let's go ahead and hit this on the time lapse. Right, so next, all I'm going to do is just jack this up properly so the shock can fit back into the mount. Then I can slide the other bolt back into place here. And go ahead and tighten it all back up. Oh, I mustn't forget, I need to put the spring back in first. I almost forgot that.
well that concludes this video hope you guys enjoyed or enjoyed watching me do maintenance on the bmw this time around oh, i'm glad i can finally get the alignment done because the car's been so squidgy over bumps and so unsettled on the road so it's gonna be great to have a full line done so when that's done i'll post something on instagram with a before and after so if you want to know what's happening with that check out the instagram below and again i hope you guys have a fantastic weekend so don't forget to like subscribe if you haven't already and drop a comment below let me know change your pace on bmw content um oh about the super there's some more super content coming soon um big news about that so stay tuned and again have a great weekend i'll see you guys next time till then ciao